Hello, this lecture will cover pages 69 through 72 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on operational amplifiers, chapter 4D, the inverting amplifier. We're going to start out on page uh, 69. The last lecture we talked about the buffer amplifier. Keep in mind that the buffer amplifier was shown like this. It had a wire that went from the output to the input. Incidentally, don't get confused if you see this configuration. Don't get confused if you see this configuration. You may. This and this is the same circuit. It goes from the output directly back to the inverting input just like it does there they just have these flipped the author will do that on you so you should be able to you should get used to seeing these both ways the second configuration we're going to talk about is the inverting amplifier circuit in the inverting amplifier circuit the voltage source feeds into the inverting input that's all there is to it if you see the voltage source feeding into the inverting input that's called the an inverting amplifier configuration and you have to be able to recognize that because that's that's the first thing you're going to do when you see an op amp you're going to have to, is it a unity gain amplifier is it an inverting amplifier or is it the non-inverting amplifier take a look here in this configuration our feedback path has a resistor in it it's not a wire from the output back to the the, the negative feedback is a resistor r2 some books will, will put an RF in there. They'll call it the feedback resistor. I'm going to call it an R2. And then you have your input resistance, R1. So here's our voltage source. It goes through resistor R1 to this point here, which goes into the inverting input. And then we have our feedback path with resistor R2 to the output. Rather than using the model like we did for the unity gain amplifier, Let's find the closed loop voltage gain of this circuit by just analyzing this circuit. And you should be able to do this after I do it. What we're going to do is we're going to put a point here and I'm going to make that a node and I'm going to call that virtual ground. Virtual grounds only exist in inverting amplifier configurations. Just keep that in mind. You're not going to have a virtual ground in a non-inverting amplifier. Now, Notice that this plus goes to ground, even if, if there was a resistor in here for stability, which we'll talk about later. It doesn't make any difference whether there's a resistor here or not. When the non-inverting input goes to ground, that ground gets projected to this point because that's the characteristic of the op amp. It tries to maintain these voltages being the same voltage. So we call that virtual ground. It's not really ground. It's virtual ground, and that's a, that's a, that is a term that you'll hear a lot of in operational amplifiers. So at this virtual ground point, I'm going to have three currents if I write a nodal equation. I'm going to have a current I1, and I assigned it in that direction, plus to minus. I have I2, and I assigned it in this direction, plus to minus. And here I have I minus going in. At node 1, at the virtual ground by Kirchhoff's current law, I have plus I1, minus I2, minus I minus equals 0. I mean, how many times have we done this now? Notice my equations are very clear. I write what I1 is. It's Vs minus 0, Vs minus 0 over R1. Minus, and don't forget to put these parentheses in. You'll forget that distribution. I keep telling you this. And I'll tell you, one of you guys are going to do that on the quiz or the exam, and I'm going to call you on it because I've told you this 10 times now. Put those parentheses in. What is I2? Well, it's a minus the quantity, the voltage here minus the voltage here. It's 0 minus V out divided by R2 minus 0 because this goes to 0. There's the equation you end up with. Just form the closed loop. By definition, the closed loop voltage gain is V out over Vs. It's minus R2 over R1. Look at that. The voltage gain of this configuration is this resistor divided by that resistor, and it's a negative gain. 
all that means is if you have a positive voltage here it gives you a negative voltage there if you have a sine wave coming in that's gone positive it's going negative here it's a 180 degree phase shift that's all that that negative sign means but the gain is simply r2 over r is negative r2 over r1 it's the ratio of this resistor divided by that resistor not this one divided by that one it's the feedback resistor divided by the r1 or you can use equation B on page 63 of the lecture notes. If you take a look on control theory, and I want you to understand this control theory stuff, so that's why I go to this. That's why I, um, I, I wrote it down here. Finding C, finding G, finding the H, and plugging it in here, and you'll see you get the same gain. Most engineers do it this way. It's easier for them to see rather than going through the analysis. But here's the block diagram using control theory. There's the circuit. There's a transformation of voltage from this point to this point. Even this is ground. It's virtual ground. There's still some minute voltage that's, 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 that's processed at that point. So what is it? Well, if you just take a look at this and you use the current, you use the, the voltage divider rule, making this a ground point initially, the voltage that gets developed there is Vs times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, if that's a ground reference. I'm using like a superposition technique here that we're going to discuss later, but I'm just making this look like ground. What's that? What portion of this voltage makes it to that point? Well, that's what that's what this point. That's that point right there. It's 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 Vs times R2 over R1 plus R2. That's what C becomes. So now I just go down here, and the closed loop gain of this circuit right here is the closed loop gain of this device right here which is g over 1 plus gh c is going to go along as the constant up front here g you know is just the open loop gain it's the infinity you put infinity in there that's the open loop gain of that device divided by 1 plus the open loop gain times the portion of that voltage that's fed back to here with this being shorted to zero well it's a negative voltage being fed back it's it's negative out here don't forget it's negative R1 now, R1 over R1 plus R2. Just take this and simplify it. The voltage gain is minus R2 over R1. You get the same result as you got on the previous page right here. But anytime you recognize this circuit, I want you just to use the equation. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We've already done that here. We've done it here, and we've done it here. Let's analyze the operational amplifier below. Here we have an op-amp circuit. Right away, I want you to recognize that it is a inverting amplifier configuration because this 50 millivolt peak, we're going to say that's a V sub S, 50 millivolts. And that, that's the peak of this waveform. It gets up to 50 millivolts. It gets down to minus 50 millivolts. And it feeds into this circuit here. I want you to find the closed loop voltage gain and dB of this circuit. And I want you to find what V out's going to be. If this is a peak in, what's the peak out going to be? Well, don't reinvent the wheel. You can rewrite the, the equation right there, assign currents, do a nodal analysis. But, you know, the gain is a minus 20K over 4K. The gain's a minus 5 just by inspection. So dB is 20 times the log of the absolute value of minus 5, 13.98 decibels. And by definition, you know the closed loop gain is V out over Vs, which is a minus 5. That's by definition. So if you know Vs, you can find V out. If you have 50 millivolts here, it's a multiplication factor. Uh, minus 5 gain times a 50 millivolts is a negative 250 millivolts out here. So as this goes to plus 50 millivolts, this will go to a minus 250 millivolts. Oops. If this goes to a plus 50 millivolts, this will go to a minus 250 millivolts. As this goes to a negative 50 millivolts, this will be gone to a positive. It's 180 degrees out of phase, 250 millivolts. And those millivolts are nowhere near the rails of, let's say, plus 15 volts minus 15 volts nowhere near saturation on something like that now 
you'll notice saturation. I mean, you've all experienced saturation, where if you try to increase this voltage here more and more and more, you can get to a point where you're saturating here. Let me explain that to you real quick, how that, how, how that works. Let's say, for instance, that we have a we have a signal here of one volt. Okay. And that one volt's gonna drive this circuit. We'll do a real simple circuit here. Put a resistor in there and put a resistor in here. Let's make this one K ohm and let's make this ten K ohms. And what's the V out going to be? In this simple circuit here, this is ground. This is a minus, that's a plus. You recognize that circuit, that simple circuit, as a inverting amplifier with a gain of 10, minus 10. It's a gain of minus 10. So if you get one volt in, you're going to get 10 volt, minus 10 volts out. Well, let's make this a sinusoidal wave waveform of one volt to minus one volt. In other words, this input's going to plus one peak and it's going to minus one peak. If that's a gain of 10 on the output at the same time, it's going to be going from minus 10 to plus 10. There's zero volts there. There's zero volts there. It's going to be going to a minus 10 to a plus 10. And that's no problem, we'll say, if that's a plus VCC is equal to 10 volts and VEE is equal to minus 10 volts because it's within the rails. Now, let's say we drive this to, let's say we take this right here to 1.5 volts. This goes up to 1.5 volts on the input and down to negative 1.5 volts. You still have a gain of 10. Do you realize this is going to try to get to 15 volts. It's going to take this waveform. It's going to try to get the 15 volts like this. It can't get the 15 volts plus 15. It can't get to minus 15 volts down here because the rails are only at plus 10 minus 10. So what it does is it saturates. It saturates the waveform there and it saturates the waveform there. So what do the waveforms look like? They're distorted. They look like that. It saturates on the negative rail at minus 10. Well, the truth of the matter is, I think I might have mentioned this in a previous video, it, it can never even make it to, if you look in the specifications, it can only get to 1.5 volts of the rail on these op amps we're using. So if, if you have a 10 volts plus 10 minus 10, your output can only get to plus 8.5 on the positive side and it can only get to a minus 8.5 on the negative side. It can it, it, it can only get within 1.5 volts of the rail. If we go out and spend more money, we can get a better op amp. They'll get closer to the rail. But if you look in the specs, you'll see it's 1.5 volts. That's a, it, it's going to get to within 1.5 volts of the rail. But let's let's say it can it we're not talking about that now. I just want you to recognize the fact that if you drive this with 1.5 volt peak signal sinusoid and you have a 10, a gain of minus 10, you're going to distort that waveform. It's going to saturate here and it's going to saturate there. And you've all experienced this, I said, as you're driving your car and you're cranking up that radio and it's blaring. You get to the point where those speakers, I mean, they sound like crap because those power transistors are saturated. You're driving them into saturation. So you have to back off on the volume unless you like that distorted sound. Let's look at another application here. And that's on page number 72. On page 72, there's an application in your book. It shows an operational amplifier. Probably a little difficult to see there, but wish I could get that so you could look at it a little better but it's in your it's a it was an application example I used a while back this is the minus and this is the plus input of the operational amplifier and this is current I and that current I is flowing in this direction that's current that's the current I they're talking about right there let me read it to you 
a light meter in a light meter a sensor produces a current proportional to the intensity of the incident radiation we wish to obtain a voltage proportional to the light's intensity using the circuit shown here thus we select a value of r that will produce an output voltage of 1 volt for each 10 microamps of sensor current assume that the sensor has zero resistance so we're assuming zero resistance here and we just want to go ahead and we want to produce a current that's proportional to the intensity of this radiation that's striking this light sensor right here and we want to make it at the voltage out here well there's their solution here to this but let's look at my solution down here all we do is write a Kirchhoff's current law equation at a virtual ground point which is right here and I, I don't have to assign this current because they give it to you it's I from here to here this current here call it I you know I, I call this current here you know I2 if you will this could be I2 but I didn't put that first equation in I just I just wrote a current equation at this node right here and that is minus I because it's leaving the virtual ground point minus a zero minus V out divided by R that has to equal zero that's a pretty simple nodal equation I is equal to V out over R according to this equation well maybe you could see that from here because it's the only current that current's zero so that I has to be this current here it's the same current so I is equal to V out over R if that's a virtual ground point since R is equal to V out over R when they give that to you is 1 volt over 10 microamps resistance has to be 100 K ohms you just get a 100 K ohm resistor and you put it in there and it'll give you an output voltage here okay that produces a um, that is proportional okay the current here is proportional to the intensity of the radiation hitting it here and it'll produce a voltage here that'll be proportional to that that's a very good problem I'd look it over and that concludes the lecture on inverting amplifier configurations